Well, what a day it's been. We've been out ferreting with Steve Taylor and Simon Whitehead of Pakefield Ferrets. You'll know Simon because you've seen him at game fairs and country shows all over the UK. Now, I won't reveal the final score, but let's find out what happened. Simon. We had a slow start to the day at the piggery, uh, and it didn't work, even though the ferrets came out with, with rabbit fur in their yeah. claws. What went wrong? Well, the rabbits there are obviously used to having animals walking across the top of them, so the vibrations alerted them anyway, and they're not going to come out if there's pigs in there. And that made life a little bit harder. Ferrets went down, and it could have worked one or two ways. We could have put the ferret in, they could have bolted, and everybody's happy. But the problem is, if it was that easy to catch them all the while, we wouldn't have 50 million of them. So, sometimes, the rabbits do get the upper hand. Today was one of those days where the ferrets stuck with them in the stop ends. Obviously, they were trying to turn them with a the fur. But we were using ferrets, which won't stay there for a long amount of time. Because, obviously, we've had no rain. We couldn't even get the jenny or pickaxe into the ground. And digging wasn't an option. So, sometimes, you just got to take your hat off to them and move off somewhere else. And we'll be back with some traps and uh, some rifles to sort those rabbits out at a later date. So ferreting is not the only kind of rabbit control? No, you've got to chuck the kitchen sink at them. Trapping, netting, long netting, ferreting, everything, chucking at them. They've all, it all goes together like the ingredients to a pie. If we'd have put in some of the ferrets, what we were working later on in the afternoon, they'd have just stayed down there until we dug them out. And obviously, we can't dig them out, so our style has got to change slightly to suit the terrain of which we're ferreting. So obviously this afternoon, when it's a bit softer, it was a bank. You know, they still weren't saying because the rabbits just didn't fancy it. But this morning, you know, the rabbits had flak jackets and tin helmets on. They were ready for us. Today I noticed we had colour-coded ferrets. What, what were the, the three different colours? What, what did each colour do? Well, the albinos were generally the experienced ones. Although there was a two, one or two young albinos in there today. Uh, the little sandy coloured ones were from a friend, Russell, in, in Kent. And they were youngsters and we've been bringing them on slowly. The pole cats, again, they were experienced. But what we tend to do is, when we have the undergrowth, we'll work the light coloured ones so we can see them. It's, a, it's like having a, a stable full of race horses. You've got to pick the right one for the right race at the right time. Today, as we saw, we were using ferrets to suit the ground we were ferreting in. And especially we are using the ferret collars because if we needed to, we could, obviously we couldn't dig them out today, but at least we knew where they were. Can we just move on from the piggery? Yeah, you know? Right, we, I just wanted you to know, do, it was a disaster for us. We were really sweating on that yeah, moment. I know, I know. Yeah. Now, then it started raining at lunchtime, which yeah. added insults to the injury. Mm. So you stopped for rabbit pie, which is a, a good idea. But the afternoon, a lot better. Well, the afternoon, I mean, to me, that is a, a beautiful day. Textbook sort of ferreting day out for us. Very, very steady, you know, the, the rabbits were working the warrens perfectly. We had a dog with us, of course, Maud was marking the holes, and she was really kind of just steadily going up and down. If you watched her, you could see her ears going, you see her, her foot come up, and you know that things are going underneath the ground. And that, to me, is, is why I go ferreting. I love to see that kind of thing. A rustle of a few leaves, and a rabbit will just ball itself up into that net. Just great. Simon, describe the, uh, the terrain and geography and, and your tactics with this, with this bank. Well, the bank was big. Uh, it looked quite ugly to begin with because we've never ferreted it before. It was on a new, a new contract. And ferreting a, a warren for the first time is about testing the water, you know, where the stop ends go, where the bolt holes are, are they joined, are they not joined. So we sort of second guess where we had a four or five hundred yards of netting down. So we, we had to get all that to section it off into what I thought were sections and then we, we fed it from one end to the other. And what the uh, purse nets didn't get, the dog got, or the long, or the stop, long nets or the stop nets got. And because we were working a team of ferrets, they were, they, were, they were working like a little squad and they were just working through. And you'll notice how we just let them go on top of the ground, not keep disturbing the warren and walking up, just let them get on with it. And then it paid dividends. And we were slowly, the stubborn rabbits obviously didn't really fancy coming out you know halfway through it but they had to because they didn't as i said they didn't fancy mixing it with this team of ferrets rabbits tend to stick to the roots and the base of the hedge and run down and with the cleverly placed stop nets we can then stop them and it worked well today because one or two of that did come out through a puff of twigs headed not out into the open field they're headed down and then in, into the stop net and the, all the nets again complement each other you know you, you could just put your long nets down they could have hopped from hole to hole you could have put just purse nets down, one could have broken, gone across the field. And so what we try to do is, is limit their chances of escape. 
So if, if we, we were digging or laying a net or dealing with a rabbit and one did come out, there's a big pair of hands there to catch it for us because at the end of the day, we're there to clear the rabbits. So, you know, we, we're going to use anything we can to do it. So 200 yards stretch of bank like that, what was the preparation time? Um, probably about three quarters of an hour, I think. So as quick as we walk, we can put them down. The purse nets were quite time consuming, but once you get in the hang of it and you get them down, the worst thing about today was, as I said, the debris. Hmm. Uh, everything is dead, you know, you've got twigs and every, everything and you've you got to make sure nothing inhibits a person action of the net because if not you might as well not have it there. Later on in the year, January, February, we get a lot of youngsters about which you then got to counteract with a different sort of tactic so you know June here we can hit the rabbit population when it's at the, at the peak of their uh, population so there's no babies <laughs> running about and then do some damage so when they do start breeding the population will be reduced and then we start again. They're all big rabbits today weren't they? Aren't they? Yeah they were, they were all they're all sort of full grown rabbits I mean uh, I prefer like three quarter grown rabbits something like that you know for eating I mean that's my that's why I go for it because I like to eat rabbits you know but uh, a three quarter grown rabbit would is much much better to me for my idea for eating but there was um, well, we'll see how much sort of uh, fat is on them. But this time of year, October, November, you know, they've had the summer, they've grazed, they, they've had their young. They're now in tip-top condition, really, for a restaurant or, or for wherever, wherever you want. You take the cooking very seriously. Yeah, yeah, my wife's a chef and, um, you know, she's uh, working in one of the local uh, catering colleges. And, uh, yeah, we love to eat game. I mean, the thing is, you know, there has to be some standards about this. You know, if you're going to go out and you're going to kill an animal, then you need to be able to prepare it and actually cook it. And it's not a difficult thing to cook. Can we reveal to the uh, viewers how many we actually got today? Yeah, how many did we get today, Simon? We got 16. 16? Fantastic. Yeah, which, considering the amount of time laying the nets and drinking coffee and eating <laughs> rabbit pies and looking at pigs and <laughs> listening to pigs laugh at us, it wasn't quite, you know, it wasn't too bad. Well, look, here's to um, 16 rabbits. Yeah. Well done. Cheers, mate. Well, you've read the book, you've seen the film, now let's eat the cast and have a look at what's on the menu. And guess what? Rabbit was on the menu. Okay.